Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston. Welcome to lecture 11 of Introductory Linear Algebra. Today's lecture is going to be a short one because all we have to do is we have to introduce matrix powers and they're actually fairly intuitive, so we're not going to have to say too much about them. Okay, so what a power of a matrix is, is it's just what you get if you multiply that matrix by itself a whole bunch of times. Okay, so a to the power k, that's what this notation over here means, a to the power k means a times a times a times a, where there's in total k copies of a there. So for example, a squared, a to the power of two, that just means a times a. a cubed, a to the power of three, that means a times a times a, and so on, okay? And this is just in direct analogy with powers of real numbers, right? It was the same thing for real numbers. x cubed means x times x times x, if x is a real number. Same thing here for matrices, okay? One slight sort of weird thing that you have to be a little bit careful about, though, is we define a to the power zero to be the identity matrix, okay? And the reason we do this is, well, there are two reasons that we do this. One of them is, again, to be an analogy with real numbers, okay? For real numbers, x to the power zero, if x is a real number, then x to the power zero is one, right? And remember, we think of the identity matrix as our matrix version of the number one. It's the matrix that has the property that when you do multiplication with it, it doesn't change anything. Right, so it's our matrix version of the number one. Another reason that we do it though is so that we have nice properties of matrix exponentiation. In particular, if we make the, de the definition this way that a to the power of zero is the identity matrix, then we get theorems like this one that tell us that sort of properties of matrix exponentiation that we want to hold actually do hold. Okay, so here's the setup. Suppose you've got some square matrix and k and r, they're non-negative integers. Then, well, a to the power k times a to the power r, that's just a to the power k plus r. So this is just very much like our sort of exponentiation rules for real numbers, right? If you replace a by a real number, then this is a property that you already know about exponentiation. And we're just saying, well, the same thing holds if the base is a matrix now. Okay, and similarly, a to the power k to the power r, that's just a to the power k times r, okay? And again, this is just a matrix version of a property that you already know about powers of real numbers. Okay, and both of these, like the proofs of both of these facts are just immediate, right? Like what does a to the power k mean? Well, that means you take k power, t k copies of a and multiply them together. And then a to the power r, that means you take r copies of a and multiply them together. So altogether, I've got k copies of a and then r more copies of a. So altogether, I've got k plus r copies of a. Okay, and that's it. That's the whole proof. And then the similar th thing happens for the second property. You just count how many A's there are over here and how many A's there are over here, and they match up, so they're the same thing. All right, so in general, for matrix powers, if you have an exponentiation rule for real numbers, it's probably going to work for matrices as long as there's only one thing in the base, okay? Notice in both of these rules here, it's the same matrix A in the base everywhere, and that's what lets it work. There are also some exponentiation rules if there are two different things in the base. For example, I mean, if x and y are real numbers, then x times y to the power k, well, one exponentiation rule that you know says that that equals x to the power k times y to the power k. That's true, as long as x and y are real numbers, okay? But if you replace those by matrices, then it's not true. Okay, if you do a, to, a times b to the power k, in general, that's not the same thing as a to the k times b to the k. Okay, and why is that? Well, what gets in the way is the fact that matrix multiplication is not commutative. Okay, if you were to expand this out, what this means is you take a, b, and you multiply it by itself k times. So you do a, b times a, b times a, b times a, b times a, b. Okay? But what over here on the right, what this means is a times itself k times and b times itself k times. So it's a, 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 times b, 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 b. So there's the same number of a's on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, and the same number of b's on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, but they're in the wrong orders. Okay, and you can't commute them past each other to show that they're equal. In general, they're not equal. Okay, even when k is two, these two expressions are not the same. This one on the left means a, b, a, b. This one on the right means a, a, b, b. Okay, and in general, those are different things. Okay, so if you have an exponentiation rule with just one thing in the base, probably fine. If you have an exponentiation rule with two or more things in the base, be really careful. It might not be true. All right. And one other thing that I haven't dwelled on enough yet that I want to dwell on a little bit is that matrix powers, they only make sense for square matrices. You can't do this for rectangular matrices. And the reason is just that the matrix multiplication doesn't actually make sense if you're working with a non-square matrix, right? You can't do A times A unless sort of the inner, like you need the inner dimensions between A and A to match up. In other words, you need the number of rows of A to equal the number of columns of A. It's gotta be square. 
right? So the only square matrices if you're doing powers of it. All right, so let's just compute some powers, all right? Make sure that we understand this definition and how to do the computations, all right? So just making up a random square matrix A here, A is one minus one, two, one. All right, let's compute A squared, all right? And for that, you just do your usual matrix multiplication rule. It's just both of the matrices that you're multiplying now are the same, all right? So it's rows of A dotted with columns of A, all right? So top left entry, first row dotted with first column, okay? So one minus one with one, two, well, that's gonna be one minus two is minus one altogether. Top right entry will be first row with right column. So one minus one dotted with minus one, one altogether, that's minus two. Bottom left entry, where's that come from? Bottom row dotted with left column. Bottom right entry, that comes from bottom row with right column. All right, and you do all that and you get A squared. All right, well, if we want to go higher, well, if we want to compute A cubed now, well, now <coughs> A cubed, you can think of it in either of two ways. Either you can do A times A squared, or you can do A squared times A. And even though matrix multiplication in general is not commutative, matrix multiplication with powers of a matrix is commutative. So you can do this either way. You can do A times A squared or A squared times A. You'll get the same answer. Okay, so in this particular case, this is the answer that you're gonna get when you try to compute A cubed. And you can do this again, either as rows of A dotted with columns of A squared or rows of A squared dotted with columns of A. You'll get the same answer either way. All right, and of course you can go even farther. You can go to A to the power four if you want. And based on what we've computed so far, there are a lot of different ways that we could have gotten A to the power four, okay? We could have multiplied A by A cubed, right? So that would be rows of A with columns of A cubed. Or we could have done A cubed with A, so that would be rows of A cubed dotted with columns of A. Or we could have done a squared times a squared, right? We could have done rows of a squared with columns of a squared. All of those will give us the same things. As long as sort of the powers add up to the right number, you're gonna get the right answer, okay? So there are a lot of different ways that you can think about this matrix here, but no matter which one you use to compute it, you've got the same thing. All right, and now I'm just gonna do a sort of a brief sidebar about how to compute large powers of matrices a little bit more efficiently than this naive way of increasing the power by one every time. What if I asked you to compute a to the power eight? Okay, well, I mean, you could compute a to the power five and then eight to the power six and then to the power seven and then to the power eight just by multiplying by a every single time. But if we use your, our exponentiation laws, right, our power rules, then we can do this a little bit more quickly by noticing that, hey, a to the power eight, that's the same as a to the power four squared. So I just compute this, take this a to the power four that I already have and I square it, I multiply it by itself and that'll give me a to the power eight. And when I do that multiplication, I mean, it, it's kind of ugly because the numbers are getting bigger, but it's just, again, the same thing from definition, and this is what I get. And certainly, even though the numbers are big, that's much quicker than multiplying by A an additional four times, okay? And the savings get even greater when you go to larger powers of A, okay? So if you want to compute large powers of a matrix, don't just multiply by that matrix over and over and over again. Rather, compute powers sort of by squaring as much as you can. And then, so like, for example, if you want a to the power eight, you just square a bunch of times. If you want a to the power nine, well, you square all the way up until you're a to the power eight, and then just one, multiply by one more copy of a. Okay, and this sort of trick, this is called exponentiation by squaring, okay? And it's a much quicker way of computing exponents of large matrices. And the same trick works for numbers as well. And the same trick is used for, for large exponents of numbers, okay? All right, so that basically does it for powers of matrices. Later on in this course, we're gonna to return to powers of matrices and see how to generalize this definition, okay? So all we've done so far is we've learned how to compute powers of matrices where the exponent is some non-negative integer. So a to the power of zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. <clears throat> Later on in this course, we're gonna learn how to define things like a to the power of minus three. What does the minus third power of a matrix mean? That seems kind of weird but it's something that we'll be able to do. And even more weirdly, we'll be able to talk about things like a to the power of root two, or a to the power of pi, or a to the power of seven fifths, stuff like that, okay? So we'll be able to do arbitrary real number powers as well, once we develop a little bit more theory. All right, so that'll do it for today. We just have one more lecture in week three about matrices, and then we'll move on to bigger and better things. So I will see you next class when we start talking about block matrices.